Okay, all right. So this is where we last left off is that we have uh, to replenish the petty cash fund, okay? So this is where mm -hmm. um, Albert and Irene mm -hmm. and the owner went out to get party supplies for a business party for the grand opening, okay? Mm -hmm. So here are the receipts that they put back in the cash box. So how do I replenish the petty cash drawer? Okay, assume this, okay? Assume that all of these are going to fall under the category of a business expense because it's not going to fit anywhere else. Okay, so how do I mm -hmm. replenish a petty cash fund? Petty cash and uh, uh, checking and get petty cash, no? No, you oh. never. Uh, on the other side. Yes. <laughs> petty cash and uh, checking. I'm sorry. No, no, you never oh. use petty cash to replenish. Because if okay, I if so I what? put cash into the petty cash drawer, then my petty cash is going to increase. Okay. And in this case, I'm not looking to increase it. I want to put money back into the petty cash drawer. Because right now, I had $500. Now, because I spent okay. all this money, I don't have $500 left in my... Um, uh, in my cat in my petty cash drawer anymore, right? I have money no, in there and a bunch of receipts. Yes. Uh huh. So how do I replenish my petty cash drawer? How do I take those receipts and put more cash in there? Hey, you see that is an expense. Is something an expense that is gonna? Okay, so let's take a look at all the expenses. Where do you think a a uh, party cake, party supplies, and pizza. Mm -hmm. Where do you think all of that is going to fall under? Under expenses. Uh, utilities? Uh, it's definitely not a utilities. I, I, no, I try to, <laughs> to find something better. Office, suppli office supplies? It is definitely not an office supply. No. Can, can a birthday cake be, or can a cake be a office no. supply? Nope. Yes. Business expense? Business expense is correct. Good. Oh. Business expense. Okay. So, uh, uh, business expense is, and uh, from the bank, uh, checking how we decrease the account. Good. Now, how do uh, how much is going to be my total? Um, how much is going to be my total business expense for? Business expense for the amount of uh, here, 187 plus 23 and 71. No, that's all. We have just to, to put what we expend. No, no more, no? That's Good, so mean. let's calculate it. Okay, plus 71, uh, 82. Uh, Two hundred and eighty-two and seventy-eight cent. Two eight two seven eight. Two hundred and what? Eighty-two and seventy-eight. Good. Two hundred eighty-two seventy-eight. Yes. Good. So. Yeah. Uh, was that that set to to uh, how could that to re, uh, replenish uh, the petty cash? Mm -hmm. And how and then how are we gonna put the money back in there? Uh, okay, that's so now you use petty cash, no? No. What do I have to do? If, if I'm trying to put oh, money back the in there. Money, you take the money, you put it inside the back side. No. Y yeah, but how do I, what What do I need to do? What do I need to do to put the money back? The balance sheet? Well, how do, how do, where do I have to go to get the money? To the bank. So. Oh, to check. You have to write a check. Yes, you have to I'm write a check. Mean, yes. I'm going to find a way. <laughs> No, 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 no. Yes, you need to go to the bank, cash out the check, and put the money into the cash register. Yes. 
Oh, I was thinking too much, too okay. far away. I don't know. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so it's June 30th, okay? How much mm -hmm. is it going to be for? 282.78? Mm -hmm. 282.78. Okay. And who are we writing it out to? Well, we'll obviously designate somebody. No, but petty cash, no? I'm just going to say to petty cash, yeah. You would actually designate it to somebody to go to the bank and cash it out and put it in there. But in this case, I think I, I, think I signed it to Irene. So Irene, Irene, yes, Irene, Irene mm -hmm. is going to be responsible to do that. Mm -hmm. All right, so 1533 is the check number. So now we have to journalize and uh, ledger. Yep. Actually, you put all of the receipt together uh, on business, or yes. Yeah, I put them all in together into one because this is all going to be a business expense, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So business expense, other ledger. And uh, you remember that we were doing the ledger for the all the receipt to see the amount that and the later we journal. When we learn about the the petty cash, we put all of the receipt on the ledger, no? And we no, that was one by one expense. Yeah, uh, yeah, expense. yeah. We're gonna list all the expenses. Yeah. So in this case, what did you what what was the receipt for? Pizza, pizza, uh, cake, and uh, balloons, and uh, stream, uh, streamers, napkins, decorations, and utensils, right? Yep. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, and then you could say on six twenty. What was it? When was it? Six twenty three. 623, yeah. yeah, 623, um, uh, grand opening party. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's looking at uh, when you, okay, um, when we learn uh, that you, uh, you, Put every expense one by one. So and then. Uh, well, in this case, they're all going into the mm -hmm. same one. The same one. Yeah, it's not like I bought office supplies. I bought some stamps. I bought, um, you know, I I didn't go beyond that because if I did buy more than that, then yes, I would journalize them separately. But in this case, all of them are going to go into the same the one, uh, account. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. No, I understand. And I'm going to write him and say replenish petty cash fund. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there we are. Okay. So how much was it? 282.78? 282.78. Uh-huh. So my total balance? Uh, oh. One thousand two eighty two and seventy. Good. All right. And then where do we need to go? To checking. We need to go to checking. Mm-hmm. Check. Number fifteen thirty three. Thirty three. Mm-hmm. Thirteen forty two sixty and sixteen. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Yep. Now, so that's for the petty cash. Yep, that's for the petty cash, yeah, to replenish the petty cash fund. Okay. I can receive the balance. You estimate for the. Wow. 
Okay, now we have an estimate allowance is of the full account basis on the 5% account and receivable balance. What's that? <laughs> What's it mean? Well, let me see. Okay, we are estimating an allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, mm -hmm. it is yes. estimated that the company estimates that about 5% of 5%. accounts receivable is to be mm -hmm. uncollectible. Okay, so we have to calculate the 5% of the account receivable and that going to Correct. the bad debt. Good, good, good. So let's go ahead and take a look at our amount in the account receivable. What amount is in account receivable? Let's see. Checking here. Petty cash, cash and register. Account receivable. How much is my current account receivable right now? $1,531.95. Okay. So I need to calculate 5%, correct? Mm-hmm. So it is seventy 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 six dollars and fifty nine uh, fifty sixty cents. Uh, what was it? Uh, one five three one nine five times point zero five comma two. Is seventy six sixty? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Seventy six sixty. All of it. So seven. Ouch. Go back to this. So. <laughs> Mm, how would you feel like that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm asking you. Okay, this is going out from uh, the account receivable. Nope. Nope. It's s. It's an estimate. And it's an estimate. So this is so, going to go back from chapters uh, ten point ten two. Yep. One. Uh huh. That's a good question. I don't remember anything. <laughs> I don't know how to journalize right now. But, so, let's see. Hmm. I don't know how's it going now, right now. So in this case, right? Mm -hmm. What happens when we have potential bad debt? What do you call it? Can you remind me how we call that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what what happens when we have potential bad debt? What do we call that? What? Potential bad debt. What do we call that? Is uh, it's on the page. Doubtful for doubtful and uh, Yes, good. Allowance for doubtful Allowance accounts. For doubtful accounts. Yeah. Good, right? So that's what. Mm -hmm. Now, in this case, right, do we know who? No. No, we don't. No, and, just take and, the, and where yeah. are, what, 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 what's the date today? The 30th. It's at the end of the accounting period, right? Uh-huh. So yeah. what does that tell me? That you don't going to get the money anymore? Uh, we're writing off a loss, right? What? We're writing out, we're writing off a loss. Mm -hmm. Because in reality, right, when you sell products to people and you place them on account, can you realistically, um, can you realistically trust all your customers to pay you back 100%? No. No. So, 
Okay, so that 5% that we're calculating right now is potential yes. bad debt. Yes. But now, is, yes. What, 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 what entry do we use to make an adjustment entry like this to calculate bad debt? It's bad debt. Bad debt bad what? Debt expense. Bad debt expense. Now, now here's the determining factor. Which method are you going to be using? There's two methods that we learned, right? The allowance method, mm -hmm. right? There's the balance yeah. sheet method and the income bad statement debt. method. Mm -hmm. Which one is this one? This is the balance sheet, no? Balance sheet. Good. So therefore, do we have a current balance in the uh, allowance for doubtful accounts? Mm, nope. No, we don't. <laughs> we don't. So in this case, right, how much is 5%? We talked about it. It's eight, it's, um, $76.60, right? So mm -hmm. therefore, I'm going to be debiting debt, bad debt expense. What's my, what's my credit account going to be? Doubtful uh, allow, uh, allowance for doubtful account. Correct. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a bad debt. Okay. <laughs> Expense and allowance for doubtful doubtful uh, account. Maybe so what? Okay, 11, mm -hmm. 11 what? 11, 100. And my 11, bad debt expense? The bad uh, expenses is bad debt, 65,000. 65, okay. Yep. I try to see how, how, uh, how it's connecting with the what, how we learn, uh, what we're learning with that. Because we're at the end of the accounting period, right? We mm. have to assume that we're not going to receive realistically 100% of all of our sales, right? We can't trust our mm -hmm. customers to get pay us 100%. So the IRS allows us to take a certain percentage off and take it as a loss. Mm -hmm. And that is 5% margin. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're saying, we're well, it. we don't know if Katie's going to not pay us. We don't know if corner bookstore is going to fall on their payment. We don't know. We don't know. Yes. So that's the reason I, uh, we use a uh, bad debt expense. But that's correct. Expense, we, we, uh, in, uh, we don't know if he's going to pay. Exactly. And if you use the bad debt expense is you know that he's not going to pay. No, no. You no. when you know you're going to use the allowance for doubtful accounts. Remember, that, remember, bad debt, ex yes. bad debt expense, the, the key thing that we know about that is that we don't know who. Mm -hmm. This is a rough estimate. Oh, I got it. Uh, it's the full okay. amount from the full amount. That's an estimate. Ah, I got it. I Correct. Got it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now, when we do know exactly who and we know who exactly when, we use the allowance for doubtful accounts. Allowance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now we remember that. Okay. Yeah, I have to back to everything. <laughs> this is some stuff that I, it's on the exam. I, I have to remember. Yeah. Okay. No, it's it's really easy. It's just uh, it's just to remember mm -hmm. everything back. And I don't have my my notes with me. I just have the the coffee cafe and it's okay. So again, so bad debt expense. So what are you gonna put here? There's an estimate of... Uh, okay, good. Um, Account receivable? Uh-huh. 5% of... I'm going to put A slash R for accounts receivable. Mm -hmm. okay.
we can, give me one second. We're gonna use the formula once for the, the rest. I'm gonna take my notes one second. Okay, for okay. Years. So what we get the five percent estimate from mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's exactly what I hear is the five percent uh oh my god. Yep. There we go. Now I can see that I have a <laughs> Red on my nuts. No worries, it's okay. And uh, we have to generalize some allowance on that full uh, account. Okay, allowance for double accounts. for doubtful accounts. Mm -hmm. Got the balance, there we go. That's how it is. Let's multiply the balance. Yep, because that one can. So the other, um, now here we calculate from the estimate. So we don't have any, 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 uh, let's see. So I give you 5% estimate total credit. So. No, no, I just was reading here back the notes and uh, just, uh, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yep, so now we have to move on to the depreciation. So here's your, oh, here's the depreciation tables. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, okay. So what does it say here? For the first one that we're going to depreciate. What are we depreciating first? It's the track. Okay, I want more, I calculate one more depreciation on track. Uh, the mileage is fifteen one hundred fifty thousand. Need maintenance. Savage, savage village value is uh, no savage value. Mm -hmm. Seven years. This month we do the top. 
or one uh, one uh, one thousand two hundred miles. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, the total mi mileage divided by the which method we're gonna use, by the way. What method does this look like? Unit of product, depreciation by the number of units of asset product. Nope. Uh, Which unit of the production? Double declare. Double declining? Oh, no, straight line method? Or double declining? One of them. None of those. None of those? Oh, what was nice. the very first one you just said? Activity method. Okay. Unit of uh, unit of product. Right, Activity. because what do we have? One product. <laughs> so I was thinking I forgot. Okay, let me see. Unit of product, the uh, of uh, based on the number of unit of asset of the product capacity production. Okay, so you need a product. Okay, well, why? Do you do you understand why? No, I don't remember. No, I don't. It's a truck, right? How do you how do you yes. what when you take your your car in to get service? What 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 do they tell you all the time? When how 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 do you know when to take the car into for service? How do I know when I take the car to what? Your car okay. for in for service. What do you mean? I don't understand. When you drive your car, right? Yes. How do you know yes. when you need to take it to the shop to get it serviced? The mileage? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> I just say that. Isn't okay. that, but in this case, right? We're doing it based on mileage, right? How many, what's the capacity? Mm -hmm. There's a capacity, right? Yes. What is it? Uh, the... 150,000. Good, right? That's the capacity for the asset before you have to take it in for service or it, it becomes old, right? Mm -hmm. That you have to drive it 150,000 miles. So in this case, right, what did I say in the month of June? How many miles did I drive? Uh, one thousand two hundred. Exactly. So in this case, right, that's how I'm depreciating. I'm depreciating it based on a capacity, which is mileage, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a depreciation between the cost of the asset and service value. It doesn't have a service value. So it's going to be the same like the, the mileage, no? What do you mean it's going to be the same as the mileage? It doesn't have a, a service value. Uh, is the cost of asset minus the service uh, value, the depreciation basis. Okay. What's your asset cost? How much did it, you? How much did you buy the truck for? Isn't that the cost of the 30, asset? Thirty thousand. I don't know. That's the cost of the asset, no? How do you how do you figure out where you can find the cost of the asset? And the uh, track that we buy. Oh, okay, but where where more specifically? The ledger. The ledger. Let's go to the ledger. Let's go to truck. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. There we go. Truck. Oh, not there yet. I went too far. Okay, so truck. How much is my truck? 32,208.90. Okay. When did I place it into service? On June, on the 7th. 
know. They remember, rem remember, right? We talked about this. When you buy a car yeah. and you drive it off the parking lot, you automatically depreciate it starting that day, right? It's, it's the same day that that it starts to work, no? Is that the, how we start to dip, uh, the depreciation? In this case, no. Uh, like we talked about this when we when we bought the car. When do we depreciate it? Mm -hmm. You do you depreciate it as soon as you drive it off the parking lot. Okay. So in this case, when did I buy my truck? June seven. I don't. Th I think. I think it's June eight that we bought the truck. I don't know why that says seven. Uh, we have to see on the pages for the beginning. Let me see. I can check it on the pages. I'm pretty sure we bought it on June eighth. The truck from us. The June 8th, Saturday, yeah. Okay, so there you go. So we put it in service as of June 8th, right? Because we had to drive it to the store. Mm -hmm. So therefore, right, that's the day that we used it. Okay, it's the day that you depreciate it's going to be the day that you bought it, in this case. All right, and it was for $32,208.90. Right? So then, yes. how do I solve for my depreciation basis now? So the cost asset minus the savage uh, value. Okay. Which in this case, we don't have salvage value. So, so the, the, the cost is 32000 32,208.90, okay? What is my depreciation rate, or in this case, the per unit rate? Uh, the depreciation basis divided by estimate the number of units of, so divide by one, 1,500,000. Okay. Okay. So let me see, <laughs> let me calculate. I just tried to first uh, find what we have to do. Okay, so uh, I don't know why it's changing. Okay, one second, this doesn't work. All right, so we have a one fifty thousand divided by thirty two two zero eight one ninety four point sixty six. How did you get that number? What did you I say? Don't know. You said you took the thirty two two zero eight ninety, right? Yeah. And you divide it by. Divide by one hundred fifty thousand miles. Okay. Oh, zero point two one four seven. Good. Right in this case, mm -hmm. how do I solve for how many? how much depreciation expense that I used in the month of June. So, uh, the number of units of the product, 1,200 times uh, uh, seven? Seven years? Not seven. One month? No. What's the purpose of solving the per unit rate or the depreciation rate? It's time to, it's time, uh, 1,000, uh, 1,200 uh, time uh, the rate, zero time to uh, zero point uh, two, no? Y yes, okay, but answer my question. What's the purpose of solving for the rate? What's the purpose to solve for the rate? Yes. Why, are, why do you need to solve for the rate? To know how much uh, you... Okay, so in this case, right, if the whole entire truck cost me $32,208.90, right? <coughs> oh, sorry. 
and I'm dividing it by the total number of units that it could produce, right? That mm -hmm. means this is going to be per unit rate, meaning it's going to cost me 21 and 4, 7 cents for every mile that I drive. Okay. Yes. So in this case, how many miles did I drive? 1,200. 1,200. Mm -hmm. So that's going to tell me how much I have to depreciate it, right? Because I solve for a per unit rate. For the time that you use it, yeah, uh, the time, uh, how much you, uh, you depreciate the truck? Right. Um, oh. But in this case, I had to solve for my per unit rate to tell me how much is it going to cost me for every mile that I drive. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, okay. So then now that I drove 1,200 miles, how much did it cost me? 257.64. Okay. Alright, 257. Okay, 257, 67. 67. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then it's up to you if you want to solve for the rest. You don't ex actually, you don't, uh, you don't have to do it, but I'll just do it for you because it's just the same numbers except yeah. you're just minusing. Yeah. Yeah, rest minus. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> 58. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. So what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you journalize all of them in one, in one sitting instead of having to do each one at each time. Does it make sense? So I'm gonna have you journalize it all together, all the depreciations. Okay. Hmm. All right. So what's the, the next one? The next one. One. Uh, can create one more depreciation for both coffee brewer. And the first brewer has the life remaining three years, no salvage value. The second brewer has a useful life of five years and no salvage value. He used the straight line method. Okay, so we're doing the coffee brewers. Okay, how much did I have the coffee brewers? Mm -hmm. do the straight line? Mm -hmm. We're doing straight line. Mm -hmm. You have the formula from there, straight line. Yeah. Okay. Where's that then? I cannot find anything. I'm sorry, I'm not ready for that. <laughs> Today I don't know where are the, the formulas and everything. Okay. This is type. Mm -hmm. I don't know what do they put all of this, this uh, formulas. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know where I have the the formulas, but that's interesting. I have it up on the page already. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me see. We need to know the uh, the how they put those the blooper. The first and the second one. Well, the position first uh, is uh, cost of the asset and the salvage value, the straight one. And the one divided. Okay. You want to write them or you're going to keep them on the, on the, on the screen? I, I mean, uh, I'm, I have to work with you, so I can mm -hmm. keep it on the screen. Yeah, there it is. It's there. But I have to work on this with you together, yes, so. Now it is there. Mm -hmm. Cost of asset minus salvage uh, value. We don't we don't have it. Okay, do I have? So I don't know where did I put the formula. Depreciation expense depreciation is done. Okay, it's the same except the rate value. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to find the value of the brewer. Okay, and how do we do that? 
<coughs> we go to the ledger. Go to the ledger. <coughs> Okay, so we're going to go to Brewers, Coffee Brewer. Here we are. So we have two, one, the first one it is, uh, the first one it is uh, 1,900. 1,900. And the second one is 4,505.29. That is not the cost of the second brewer. With the discount that we have, no, it's supposed to be. Only mm, one. That include that's all of the brewers. That this is your this is your balance. Oh, that's uh, oh, oh okay. That's the second brewer is there. Yes, it's four uh, four thousand. No, it's no, it's two thousand six hundred and twenty seven ninety five. What what about the discount? Yeah, minus the discount, minus twenty two dollars. Two sixty seven. Point ninety five minus twenty two point sixty six is two thousand six hundred and five point twenty nine. Good. Okay, so nineteen hundred two six zero twenty nine. Okay, so I'm gonna plug that into my depreciation table. Okay, so coffee brewer number one is nineteen hundred. Mm -hmm. Cost of my second coffee brewer. It is uh, two thousand six hundred and five and um, twenty six ninety cent. Okay. So one thousand nine hundred is the basic depreciation. Yes. I'm sorry. Say that again. What are you? What? what? The uh, we're doing straight uh, straight net, no? Y yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know because you you didn't fill out the whole table. How do you know what to do? Oh, we have uh, here the information. We have uh, okay. The savage value is uh, it doesn't have a, we don't have a savage value. No, we don't. Is uh, the first brewer has a uh, life remaining for three years. The first one. So useful life, three years, okay. Three years. And the second one have a five years. Okay. When did we put the first one in, in, in service? Oh, I will be, I don't know. It is on the ledger. We have to talk to the ledger. I don't know. Uh, we put the, the first one. May 31st? Is it possible? May 31st, let me see. No. no. June 4th? June 4th, right? The day that we purchased it, right? It's yeah, already it ready for service. We have to make sure the machine oh. works before we can keep it. Okay. Right? That's just rule of thumb. You should always make sure your machines work. So June 4th for the first one. What about the second one? The second one, I, uh, we come back to the ledger. Okay, so it is the 10th. Okay. So what does that tell us? That means we have to depreciate the month of June. Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and figure out this. Okay, so what was the depreciation basis for the first one? 1,900. Okay. Okay, and the depreciation rate is uh, 600, and that's 1 divided by... It's can be zero point zero 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 five two. Mm, what did you get that number? Uh, one divided by uh, one uh, one thousand nine hundred. Not not the asset cost. Not the asset cost is the. Uh, 
estimate to oh, estimate the so it's three years, three years, three by two. Zero point three 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 three. Okay. So now I have a one one seven ten ten x three 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 six hundred thirty two point seven. Now think about it. Mm -hmm. How much depreciation am I supposed to be calculating? What, how what? Again? How much dis depreciation am I supposed to be calculating? One, uh, one month. One month. And this yeah. $633.33 is for a whole year. For, yes. Mm -hmm. So we have to divide by 12. Okay. Six, three, three, okay. Six point seven divided by twelve. It is fifty two, fifty two seventy. I don't know where you got seven from because three, 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 three I don't know where you got seven from. Oh, my, <laughs> I don't. So fifty two uh, and uh, seventy eight. I I find 80, I don't know where I find the all this number. So, okay, so 52, 78, so the same, 52, 78, and now 1, 100, minus 52, 78, it makes 1,847.21. Okay, so that's for the first brewer, right? Let's mm -hmm. calculate for the second brewer. Okay, the second one we have a two thousand. How much I say? Two thousand six hundred and five and twenty nine. Okay, and we have uh, five years life, so it is two thousand. We don't have a depreciation. Uh, 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 we don't have a uh, savage value. Sorry. Okay. So it has to be 2,605.29. Okay. And now the rate it is 2,605.29. Oh, shoot. Yeah. That's not the depreciation. Okay. That's not five the head itself. Okay. Five. Divide by 5. Uh, 0 0.2. Okay, divided by 5. Is 0 0.02 good 20%? Okay, mm -hmm. and um, time to sit is 521.058. We have to divide by 12. Mm -hmm. Divide by 12. Okay, so second, if one divided by 12. It is 40.80, just, can it be possible? 40.8 cents. Okay, so 52105, okay, 52105 divided by 12 is not 40. It's 43. Oh, okay. It's 43.42. Yeah, I divide by 13. I don't know. An extra month on the year. Okay. 43.42. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Yep. So 42.43.42. So minus 265.29. It's 2,561.87. and 87. Okay, so in this case, since we've got to combine the coffee brewers together, we're going to take the 52.678 plus the 43.42. Sorry, I have hiccups. 
to give me a grand total of $96.20. Ah, uh, let me see. Uh, 22.78 plus uh, 43.42, 96.20. Oh, that's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So what does the next one say? Uh, wait, let me see one second. I didn't finish to write everything. Let me, uh, calculate one month of depreciation for coffee. Five years life straight line. No residuals. What's that? Coffee grinder, the grinder. Okay. Okay, so we need the value of the grinder. And we have a double decline. It does not say double declining. What does that say? Oh, it doesn't say it's on the second one. So a straight line. Straight line. Straight line. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So we have a... Uh, we need a calculator to see the price of the, the grinder. What is there to calculate? Did you use 4,000? Copy the one percent. It's 4,158 and 7 cents. What are you calculating? I don't calculate anything. The grinder we have to calculate now. Why do you need to calculate the grinder? That is the grinder. There's only one. No, I know. I need, that's the price, that, the cost. <laughs> But but you already have the account balance. We already took the, the we already took the one percent discount out already. Yes. No, we don't have to calculate anything. I I just taking the price of the the cost of the grinder. How did you get forty one, forty one fifty seven oh five? Where do you get that number? Or or sorry, forty one fifty eight oh seven. Oh seven from the price of the grinder at the beginning. Because you, uh, you, uh, it is one uh, four thousand four uh, one four uh, one four five fifty seven. This is the price. That's the price now because we are we discounted it right. So we therefore, discounted. we bought yeah. the we bought the 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 coffee grinder for a discounted price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you received the grinder before or after when you received the invoice. At the same time. I don't understand what you're trying to say to me. Oh no, my I just. You asked. said you receive. We received the bill. Yeah, on the ten. On the tenth. The tenth, and we uh, received the. Discount the twenty five. Because we paid for it, right? They we gave us terms. It. Yeah, but if you see that we pay well, at the amount of the grinder. Ah, oh, but that's later. Doesn't matter. No. Doesn't matter. That was my logic, but it was no logic. Uh, you see, the fifteen is when you receive the you buy the grinder. The twenty five you pay, so do you receive you receive the discount? You know what I mean? Right. So the <laughs> the price the the asset cost. It is one four thousand one hundred forty five. It doesn't matter the depreciation. If you can do it all year, it's month by month. I just uh, get out of the contest. You know. Okay, cause okay, so cause in this case, right? No, I want you to understand because you're confusing yourself. So in this case, right? What what was the actual price you paid for the actual coffee grinder? Four thousand one hundred forty-five. I think you say. So that's the price exactly. That's the asset cost because it includes shipping, it includes freight, and it includes all the fixtures that we put into it, right? I know, but you start to use you you try the 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 grinder before because you receive the grinder and and uh, the 15 that's the reason you journalize mm. so the 25 you pay because you have a terms but you try if you say that you have to to turn around the grinder and to see if it works so the price that you have for the to start the depreciation is the first the first one or with the, what you pay Yes, yes. That's what I was thinking. That okay. I, I All right. <laughs> okay, because the cost of the asset is whatever you paid for. In this case, I didn't pay for the full thing for 41, 
5807, I got discounted. Yes. So that, therefore, my asset cost is no longer 415807. It is now 414557. But you are correct. When we depreciate it would be the day that we finish our fixtures and, and add everything in there, which is on the 15th of June. So in this case, do I need to depreciate for the month of June? No, it's the next month, actually. What's the cutoff line? Yeah, actually, the 15th. The 15th is the exact date, correct. So that if you, you, you depress the, the 15th, you have to take the price that you have at the beginning, no? No, because, okay, it doesn't, okay, it, it, okay, so in this case, right, how much did you actually pay for the coffee grinder? 4145 that's how I understand. That is the asset cost, uh, yes. okay, because that's how much you paid for, so from here on out, where you're moving forward and you do depreciation, that's how much the asset's going to cost you. It's going to stay $4,145.57. So because that's what the, it costs. That's what it costs. Oh. Mm -hmm. So the, the depreciation is the day that you pay, uh, uh, you, uh, you use the cost that the, the day that you pay, not the, year, the day that you receive the, the, the start to use the, the merchandise. You understand what I mean? <laughs> In this case, <laughs> yes. The, the, the purpose of it isn't when you get the asset to your store. It's when you put the asset into service. In this case, we had to do fixtures, right? We had to build a foundation. We had to do electrical wiring, right? Yeah. So you didn't use the grinder yet. You have to all the installation and then you use it. Correct. The so when did I use it? I used it as of June 15 because I have to, once everything is being done and everything's done, right, I have to turn it on to see if it works. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Good. So the asset cost does not rely on when the date that you buy it, right? It's on the day that when you make a full payment to it, what was the actual price you paid for it? In this case, I paid it at a 1% discount. So therefore, I actually bought the coffee grinder at a discount. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Okay. That's, that, that's the reason I didn't know if it's, if it's, so, if it's so important. The... It's very important that you know that because there's a difference between the asset price right mm -hmm. and the actual date that you actually place it into service and the actual date when we actually paid for it right mm -hmm. those are two separate transactions right there yes so in this case so the method that we are using is straight line, it's straight line. Mm -hmm. okay so my asset how much does it cost <laughs> four thousand one hundred forty five and fifty seven cents And then we have... Uh, 4145 and 57 cents, okay. Salvage value? It is uh, uh, 0 0.2. My salvage value? No salvage value. No salvage value. What was my estimated useful life? Five years. When did I place this asset into service? On June 15th. June 15. And in this case, because that's the exact cutoff point, do we depreciate for the month of June? Yes. Yes, right? It's not the 16, which is mm -hmm. what that's when you have to depreciate it the next month. Mm -hmm. So in this case, right, uh, what does that say? Depreciation basis. What is the depreciation basis going to be? Oh, one. 4,145 and 57 cents. Okay, what is my depreciation rate going to be? It is 0 0.2. Good, right? So let's go ahead and solve for the depreciation basis or expense for the month of June. So it's supposed to be 829 for the whole year divided by. Oops. Divide by 12, 69 and 9 cents. Can you possible? Yep. 69. And now we have uh, 
Seven. So we have four thousand seventy-six and forty-eight cents. Yep. All right. Okay. Let's see what's next on the list. <laughs> okay. So oh. one more depreciation uh, of the computer printer cash register five uh, years life double decline. No residual value. So we have to go to find the the cost of all of those uh, stuff. The register, the printer, the computer. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the uh, the computer. How much is my? Together. You doing together all of the costs? No, they're all separate. All separate. So all each one is is one. So it is a uh, one thousand eight hundred and thirty four and eighty four cents. Okay, so we're looking for the computer. I think it's in the this very the front. Computer, right? What method are we using? Uh, the double uh, decline. Okay, the asset cost is one thousand eight hundred thirty-four eighty-four. Yeah. Residual value zero. How much is the estimated useful life? Uh, five years. Five years. Okay. When did I place this into service? Mm, good question. We need to back to the ledger. The June five. June 5, because, so, yeah. right, there's nothing that needs for it to be ready for service, right? All you got to do is plug it into the wall. Mm -hmm. Okay, June 5th. Yep. Now, I need to check the formulas because I don't know. Do you have the formulas? <laughs> okay, I see. So, we have, this is amortization, this is straight line. No, we need the other one. Double decline. The cost is the cost is the book value. Position basis. Okay, the book value. The book value is the cost uh, one divided by estimated supplement. Time to Okay, so the cost, the the book value is the same, uh, the same uh, like the cost of the computer. Correct. Right now, right, because I didn't depreciate it at all, right. So my first year, mm -hmm. right. So therefore, my book value is in fact the same my the, price of, uh, the cost. Correct for the first year. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the depreciation rate so is we have a one one divided by five times two. Okay. Zero point four. Zero point four. Okay. So what is the depreciation expense for the month of June? It is fifty six forty six. Nope. Yeah. What did you do? You did the eighteen thirty four eighty four. Time four. Time uh, zero point four. Divided by twelve. Are you repunching this in your calculator? Mm, nope. I'm gonna do it again if you want. One eight three four point eight four. Times zero point four. Okay, divide by twelve. It is sixty one sixteen. No, sixty one sixteen. Yes. I don't know what's going on. Time is pumping. All right. So the same here. Sixty one sixteen. Minus 
minus one point to four point eight four. Six hundred forty-nine, six hundred forty-nine forty-nine cents, and we buy six the June six. Okay. So register cash and register. Oh no, that's just oh cash register. Mm -hmm. Double declining, asset yep. cost is six forty-nine forty-nine. Residual value zero. Estimated useful life five. Date that we placed in the service was June 6th. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're depreciating for the month of June? June, yep. You know, we don't have anything to do. <laughs> All right, so we have a 649. Oops, what happened here? Something is wrong with my point. Forty nine down zero point four to fifty nine divide by twelve twenty one sixty five. Good. Yeah, twenty one sixty five is good. Perfect. There we go. So six forty nine point zero nine six twenty seven eighty four. Good. Six twenty seven eighty four. So now what you want is the total of the depreciation of everything? So well, we're not done yet. We still got the furniture, and we still got the goodwill to amortize, and we, are, we still have a lot to go. So in this so case, let's just do let's just do the bistro tables and chairs, and then we'll come back, go on break, and then come back and finish up the rest. Okay. So what does it say here? Uh, the furniture we have the uh, uh, the furniture depreciation. Oh, we need to go to the depreciation to the furniture, no? Uh, well, let's 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 read what it says. 
Okay, calculate um, one month depreciation of uh, furniture, seven years life, straight line, no receipt. Okay, so furniture, right? What's under furniture? Can we go to the trial balance and you can see all what we have? The trial balance? Hey, the last one we have uh, all the furniture, to, uh, we put everything together on the account, no? Like that, we know all this. Of what it is on the account furniture, no? You can also use the chart of accounts. Two. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait a minute. <clears throat> the furniture we have the bistro, the counter, the desk, the display. Mm -hmm. So let's just um, only do just the, the table for today, for now. We'll go on break and then come back and finish up the rest. The history of the table, 6,605. Okay, 6,605.08, right? I think so, 6,605, yeah. Okay, and then we're doing straight line. Straight line, what's the cost? Uh, okay, we have, a, yes, we have a seven years. Um, years with life. And uh, oh, but like that, we don't know when we when we buy the the desk. We need to go to the lodge, actually. Mm -hmm. There we go. We have a June eight. June eight. So. We need to depreciate. So the depreciation goes to the position is 6,605.8. And we have a one divided by seven. You're right. 0 0.14. Mm -hmm. oh, you use all the, all the numbers? Yes, because we're going to round the depreciation expense. Mm -hmm. We have got uh, 6605.08 is 5875.5. Okay. Mm -hmm. Eight three. Six six zero five point three. Six thousand six hundred five hundred twenty six and forty five cents. Good. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's all. That's the table. Yep. That's the table. <clears throat> Those are the tables, right? Correct. Tables and chairs, yes. And chairs. And chairs. Okay. 